Good morning. This will be your teacher for today, Mr. Ruben A. Alleluia, and I will be teaching you the subject, Media and Information Literacy. To start, let us define first what is literacy. Literacy means it is the ability to identify, understand, interpret, create, communicate and compute using printed and written materials associated with varying contexts. So liter liter literacy means it is our ability to identify uh, and decode and decipher meanings from different texts found in different forms like uh, in newspaper, in uh, internet, and other sources of information. Uh, literacy also means to interpret, meaning to give our own uh, understanding on what we had read. Another is all, another also is to create. When we say to create, uh, it is uh, a skill involving uh, the production of the different information that we need. Next also is to communicate and compute. When we communicate information, it means that we uh, that we share the information that we know to others using the various forms, which is in print and in written materials. So next we have the term media literacy. So in term media literacy, what comes into your mind when we you hear these words? So uh, media media literacy means it is the ability to analyze, augment, and influence active reading. Uh, for example, viewing of other media in order to be more effective citizen. So this, uh, this definition is based on Alter Hyde framework. So next here we have uh, the Alter Hyde framework which shows us the text the reader and the culture so let us define or then let us see according to outer hide 1992 the three verbs in this definition are important and correspond roughly to consumer skills user skills and producer skills so when we say analyze here the media literate person recognizes that she is actively negotiating meaning with the media text. In addition, she is aware of factors which affect the negotiation, including personal factors like gender, race, skills, and how she is wanting to use that text. Okay? So, uh, the reader is also aware of text-related factors like medium, like the medium through which is presented. So the reader here analyzes. So this is the connection between the reader uh, through the text. So uh, the reader is trying to uh, get what, what would be the meaning of a certain text in analyze. The next one is the augment skill or the, the augment. Uh, the media literate person is able to locate appropriate additional sources to further study any topic or interest, for example, a political story in the newspaper. This ability includes being able to effectively use appropriate technology such as computers, VCRs, and videotape recorders for uh, capturing of first-hand knowledge. So, it means and uh, augment means uh, the way the the reader looks for information for example uh, they will use some tools for example like uh, using their own cell phones uh, for picture for capturing pictures using uh, other gadgets nowadays in uh, capturing information and as, as well as um, videotapes and recording that is uh, also found on our phones. 
Next is influence. So influence is in the is, is also known or influence is also producer skill. The media literate person is able to deliberately change the impact or meaning of messages. For example, a television news report that suggests all students at Claremont High are vandals. So uh, in this, influence means uh, it is the impact of the of the text on the people itself. So uh, media can influence the person itself uh, from the news that they hear. Okay, so. Uh, for example, in a political agenda, for example, when you hear a certain type of news, it gives you this kind of motivation to act with regards or in response to that kind of news. Okay, so let us move on to the next. Media. So media, it, defi uh, it is defined as the physical objects used to communicate or the mass communication through physical objects such as radio, television, computer, film, etc. It also refers to any physical object used to communicate messages. So media literally means it is the physical object that you use to capture information. So in this media are the examples of this are radio for example. Uh, you can uh, gather information by listening through news via radio. Another is television. You can also see television for more information, computers, films, and etc. So media literally means these are the physical objects that you use for communication. Like uh, what are the different examples of media that you use every day? For example, you have your cell phones you have your telephones that is an example of media next we have media literacy so let us define what is media literacy media literacy is the ability to access analyze evaluate and create media in a variety of forms it also empowers citizens by providing them with the competences or knowledge and skills necessary to engage with traditional media. We have media literacy. So another media literacy throughout the years, educators have come out with various definitions of the term media lit literacy. Nevertheless, being media literate, you can decode evaluate, analyze, produce both print and electronic media. So in, in uh, a person that is a media literate can decode, evaluate, and analyze and also produce uh, print and electronic media. So in simple terms, if you are a media literate, you can, uh, you can decipher uh, good information so you can also know what what are the different uh, legit or legitimate news from fake news if you're also a literal a, a media literacy you know how to uh, how to examine a certain information if that certain information is true or not okay so moving on what are the different benefits of media literacy? So, like all any other skills and knowledge, being a media literate also has its own advantage. First, we have being media literate develops your critical thinking skills. Okay, so how can we say that, uh, that being a media literate develop your thinking skills as we said earlier there is a world there there is a word analyze in the definition which means you analyze 
certain information that you get from different sources. You also validate that kind of um, information that you get. Okay? For example, you need an information. Is it enough that uh, you only look for one sources? You, is it enough that uh, when you when you see or when you found a certain a certain information, is it enough that uh, you take it as the truth? No. Uh, you all you have to do is to validate and to look for another sources, which may help you. Uh, validate that certain kind of information. Next, understand how media shapes our culture and society. Media shapes our culture and society by how? Um, media, media messages shapes our culture and society by, um, for example, spreading spreading uh, spreading different kinds of information in the society which which may affect our our view for example is the politics for example um, if we hear some news that uh, the president is not doing his job and it is rampant all over the internet and all over the various forms of media we might believe it okay so that is how media can change our perspective and also shape our culture and society and um, if you are a, a fan of different apps on the cell phone uh, if you know the TikTok you know, so uh, you are you are using that kind of app and that is the trending nowadays so um, media can also affect our culture as um, as we use them okay next we have identified target markets marketing strategies so next we have recognized the media maker wants us to believe or do so the benefits of knowing media literacy is to recognize what the media maker wants us to believe or or do next we have name the techniques of persuasion used Okay, so uh, if a person is giving you some information, they are also persuading you to believe the information that create, that they create. Okay, so with this being a literate, being a media literate person, you can name the techniques uh, that they use to persuade to persuade you to believe their uh, to believe their or to believe the information. Next, we have. Recognize bias, spin, misinformation, and lies. So if you are in media literacy, uh, you won't believe such uh, information with, uh, or you, you will not accept, uh, you will not accept it by heart, whatever the news that you see in the internet. Why? Because you will be too skeptical to believe that certain information for example you will ask yourself is it is this really true totoo kaya to yung ganitong mga naririnig ko so with this you can recognize what are the different bias what could be the spin spin means uh, uh, these are informations to uh, to to kumbaga parang dililito ka niya or dililihis yon ganun to dililihis niya yung yung information na kung ano yung dapat na importante pag pag pag-usapan Nag, nagbibigay sila ng bagong ng bagong hot topic para malihis yung attention ninyo on that certain kind of trending information okay so misinformation and lies yan kapag marunong na kayo if you know uh, if you know or if you are a media literate hindi ka na basta-basta maniniwala Hindi ba? Next. <laughs> Discover the parts of the story that, that are not being. So if you are a media literate person, you can determine what are what could be the different parts of the story that uh, that may not be connected to the truth. Okay? So there are sometimes 
uh, information that are being uh, presented which are not really belong to that kind of information. So some people try to put some fake news. For example, pag tumingin ka sa Facebook, there are some news on surfacing the internet that this kind or this artist has already died. Even though hindi pa naman talaga siya patay. Diba? So that is an example of uh, this uh, this benefit of media literacy. Next, we have evaluate media based on our own experience, skills, beliefs, and values. So if you are a media literate, you can evaluate media based on your experience, the skills that you have also, and also the belief and values. For example, umuulan, kailangan mong malaman kung walang paso. Diba? Uh, nag-post yung kaibigan mo na, uy, wala nang paso. Pero hindi mo alam, nagbibiro lang pala yung kaibigan mo. Hindi ka talaga pumaso. Why? Because you did not evaluate the said media. You did not search through the credible sources of information like ABS-CBN, Twitter, uh, from the Facebook, GMA7, TV5. So, that is why, that is why nadala ka kasi hindi ka, hindi ka nag-check. Okay? So, based on this, guys, based on this, you can uh, evaluate media based on your own experiences. Na ikaw, for example, na biktima ka na ng fake news, hindi ka na magpapahulog, hindi ka na magpapadala ulit sa ganong klase style. Okay? So, you will evaluate the information. Next. Number nine, create and distribute your own media messages. If you are a media literate, you can create and distribute your own media messages. Okay? So, you can you can um, make your own messages via different platforms and via different forms. Pwede mong gawing written, pwede mong gawing virtual like this, for example. Kaya nga ngayon, di ba? For example, we uh, teachers are also examples of media literate person. Because why? Nakakapagturo sila on, on front of the live students and at the same time, they can also teach students with the use of audio and recording like this one. Although students and teachers cannot meet face to face with the use of this uh, this media that we have today, teachers can can uh, still deliver their lessons through the different forms like this one, like audio, like this audio presentation. Next, number ten, advocate for media justice. So, uh, in our country, uh, media justice is such uh, such. Uh, a uh, Im- such, such an, an important um, issue. Why? Because uh, some uh, some believes that uh, the media is being silenced by the government. So, with the use of media, you can express uh, what you feel. You can express and you can advocate for cha- for change and justice. For example, ayaw mo sa administrasyon ito. Eh, hindi tayo makapag-rally ngayon because it is pandemic. What are you going to do? You can post your sentiments over the internet. Pwede mo gamitin yung internet as a uh, source of your or as a uh, platform for you to dig to uh, advocate what you want to advocate. Alright? So next here, we have Information literacy. So first, what is information? Information, it is a broad term that covers process data, knowledge derived from studies, experience, instructions, signals, or symbols. So first, let us go, what are, or let, let us, uh, let us um, analyze this definition. First, we have uh, that covers process data. What do we mean by process data? 
process data are uh, the different data that we can see or the different data that we that we can already acquire okay so what are the examples of that the information from the internet the information from the books and so much more next is the knowledge so information also came from the knowledge that you have next is derived from studies knowledge derived from studies so like research for example diba and we can gain information if we do research diba so lahat naman tayo as a grade 11 students last year diba lahat kayo ay nakaranas ng ano ng ng research so at the end of your research what have you found ano yung mga nakita ninyo okay next experience information is also based on experience Okay, so you experience something and then you gain information on that. For example, you go on a trip. For example, pumunta kayo sa Batanes, for example. So, ano yung mga nakita mo sa Batanes? Oh, like this, nakita ko to. So, ganit, nakita ko yung mga tao, ganito, may, may ganitong sinusuot sa ulo. Pag umuulan, meron pala nung honesty store. Malayo pala ang Batanes. Sa Batanes pala, mas... Pag nanood ka ng TV, nakakakuha ka na ng Chinese na mga channels. Why? Because you experience being there. Nandun ka to tell the story. Signals or in signals or symbols. So, ang information, hindi lang natin siya makikita in a paper. We can also see them through signals or symbols. How? For example, you are a driver. Di ba? If you are a driver... When you see the stoplight, when you see the stoplight, there are three colors in the stoplight, right? So, uh, if you see the green light, what are you going to do? It is a symbol or it is a signal for you to go, right? So, if you, uh, if you can see some other traffic signs along the road, that is also one example of signals and, uh, signals and symbols, okay? Next, we have Next, we have Why do we need or why do you need information? Bakit nga ba natin kailangan ng information? Di ba? So, to be updated We need information for us to be updated with the news for learning education and to acquire knowledge needed for decision making okay so first let us uh, analyze this first again so let us go to to be updated with the news so we need information for us to be updated on the different current events in our surroundings it is not enough that we only knew something about our environment but we also it is also important that we know what hap what what is happening in our surroundings okay so for learning in education purposes for example etong pagpasok ninyo sa paaralan di ba so we are uh, for example you are from a certain strand or a certain course if you uh, we need information to know more about your strand or your course di ba next is to acquire knowledge needed for decision making so, if you need information, meaning, uh, meaning uh, you can use that certain information for your personal uh, decisions in the future. Next, where do we search for information? Saan daw tayo maghahanap ng information? We have different sources like internet, television, Library, radio, newspapers, etc. So, meaning, lahat tayo ay uh, makakakuha ng news, especially sa panahon natin today, which is, uh, we, can, we can search our smartphones. For example, magpaload ka lang dyan ng 10 pesos, you can search for news on your phones. You can watch uh, different programs on your, on your phones right now. 
for example, di ba ABS-CBN, wala na sila sa wala na sila sa TV ngayon, di ba? But they are on what we call the digital platforms like YouTube, Twitter, sa Facebook, sa Twitter ay sa sa YouTube 24 hours silang live ang ang ABS 24 ata or cool day silang naka-live. So, if you want to search for something, if you want to search for information, if you want to learn, you can use this kind or or these sources for you to look uh, for you to uh, to search for information. Next, how can we acquire or how do we acquire information? Next, by written form, in printed form, photocopy, photograph, download, cloud storage, record, external memory drives, and memory cards. So, alin dito yung mga gamit ninyo? Ang pinaka-common, the commonly used, is the writing and the printing. The also, the photocopy, photocopy and the photograph. Yan po yung mga madalas nating ginagamit. And at the same time, ginagumagamit na rin tayo ng cloud, ay ng download. Okay? So, for example, nakita mo yung assignment mo on the internet. Di ba? So, you can download that on uh, on your PC and you can review that. Okay? So, cloud storages. Ano yung mga cloud storages? So, meaning, these are these are the uh, these are the uh, storage on the internet. Ito yung mga ginagamit nating storage. For example, Google Drive, uh, iCloud, for example, uh, Mega. Yan, yan yung mga example ng cloud storage. Wherein, we can store our files through the different cloud storage on the internet. Okay, meron, tayo, meron din tayong one, yung uh, cloud sa Microsoft. That is also an example of cloud storage. Record. Gaya nitong ginagawa ko ngayon. Record. So, you can record your uh, voice. You can record, for example, nag-lecture nag, nag yung teacher ninyo and then uh, narinig nyo yung importanteng mga tips or in importanteng words or terms. You can record the voice of your teacher. Next is the internal, uh, external memory drives. So, nakita na sa siguro kayo ng mga external memory drives, di ba? Yun yung mga... Yun yung mga hard drives na ginagamit ninyo like malalaki yung mga sizes niya like 500 gigabyte, 1 terabyte, 2 terabyte, minsan pinaglalagyan ninyo ng mga K-dramas, movies, ganyan. Okay? So memory cards, memory cards uh, usually are found on your cell phones. Why? Kasi yung mga memory cards na yan, yun yung nag-extend ng memory or ng storage ng ating mga cell phone. So aside from the storage of our internal storage of our cell phones we can also extend the capacity wherein we can store information with the use of memory cards okay next how will you determine the quality and accuracy of the information that we have paano natin madedetermine kung uh, yung quality and accuracy of the information na meron tayo number one it should come from a reputable source. So, what do you mean by it came? It should came from a reputable source, meaning, yung source, meaning yung uh, information na pinanggalingan ng ating mga, for example, yung mga kailangan nating information should came from the different uh, legal institution, not, not really legal, but uh, government and reliable institutions. For example, gusto natin malaman kung kailan ang first day of classes natin. So, saan tayo titingin? Aside from your Facebook accounts. So, tumingin kayo sa website ng DepEd, tumingin kayo sa website ng, uh, ng government, sa Facebook. Kasi ang ating gobyerno naman, guys, meron silang mga different Facebook pages. Ano? Kasi bakit? Bakit kaya sila gumagawa ng mga Facebook pages? Kasi... Uh, they are trying uh, their agencies to be more accessible on the people. Okay? Kasi kung, kung halimbawa, ang uh, gobyerno will, will remain as is yung hindi sila gagawa ng mga 
Facebook pages, paano tayo makakapaglabas ng mga reklamo natin? Paano tayo makakapagpaabot ng ating mga complaints? Di ba? So, uh, government agencies trying to reach out sa ating mga sa ating mga kababayan through the use of the different fan pages, not really fan pages, but uh, different Facebook pages uh, na doon sila nagpo-post. Okay? So, yan. Kailangan, pagkukuha kayo ng, ng information, kailangan galing sa mga pinagkakatiwalaan nating mga sources. Alright? For example, nakita mo, umuulan sa labas. No, sobrang lakas ng ulan sa labas. So, an ano gagawin ko ngayon? So, tingin ako sa Facebook na nagpo-post na yung mga kaklase mo sa GC na walang pasok, walang pasok. Okay? Dahil ikaw, you are an information literate person, anong gagawin mo? Maniniwala ka ba on that uh, on that speculations na, uy, walang pasok, walang pasok, walang pasok. So, what are you going to do? You're going to look for the government of Muntinlupa City. Diba? Dito sa atin sa Muntinlupa City, minsan si Mayor, maaga pa nag announce ng walang pasok or wala. Uh, may, may, may pasok o wala, diba? So next, you can look for the different television stations like ABS-CBN, GMA, and TV5. Okay? So remember guys, if you're going to look for information, kailangan your sources must be reputable and credible source. Next, how do you use the information that you have? Okay, so paano natin gagamitin yung mga information na meron tayo? So we can, we can share, apply, announce, post, archive, reminder, answer a query, and classify or clarify confusion. So kapag nagkaroon tayo ng information, pwede nating unang-una i-share. Okay? para hindi tayo para makatulong din tayo sa iba na gustong magkaroon or na gusto natin paalalahanan. Gaya ng ginagawa niyo sa Facebook, for example, pag merong importanteng announcement ng government, you share it in your time timeline. Bakit? Because you also want your loved ones to see kung ano yung information na yun. Next, apply. So kung uh, nakakuha ka ng information, you want to apply that information on you pwede rin yun. Announce. So, if you want to announce it personally, pwede rin. Post or archive. Pwede rin natin i-archive ang information. Bakit? We can archive information for future use. Okay? So, all of this might be clear to you. Next, we have How are we going to communicate information? So, yan. How are we going to communicate? How are we going to share this? By announcement, texts, post to social media, face-to-face -face session, via a note, chat, email, save to phone, or save file. Okay? So, for example, <clears throat> pwede natin gamitin itong post to social media. Yan naman, natin yung, yan naman yung common na ginagawa natin. Kapag may nakita tayong information, ang ginagawa natin is to uh, post it on social media. Why? Because on our social media, there are a lot of uh, viewers. There are a lot of uh, uh, people on the social media. Kaya if we post it on social media, meaning mas marami tayong maaabot. No? Uh, next is face-to-face -face session. So, for example, you have some information, pwede mo siyang i-share face-to-face by the, to that person. Okay? Next, we have note. Di ba? Kapag meron kang information, halimbawa, may niligawan ka, maglagay ka sa sticky note, gusto mo ba ipag-date sa kanya, date at uh, 8pm in ganitong klaseng lugar. Tapos dikit mo sa table niya, then makikita niya yun, alam niya na yung dapat niyang gawin. Okay? So, this is the most commonly used way to communicate information, which is chatting. ba? Diba? So, ngayon, marami, ng, uh, marami na tayong way para isend ang information. But through chat, ito yung madalas natin ginagawa. 
Personally nga, hindi na ako naglo-load. Bakit? Kasi sa smart, libre naman ang messenger. Di ba? Sa messenger, pwede ka makapag-send ng not only chat, but also, you can also send pictures, sounds, emojis, GIFs, and many more. Okay? But, pero ang kaibahan lang, syempre, pag free data ka, ang mangyayari ay uh, hindi mo makikita yung, yung picture. Okay? Email. So, personally, pag magpapasend ako ng pictures, sa email ko pinadadaan. Okay? So, some also uh, important, important transactions are being uh, sent in uh, sent through emails. Okay? So, same file. For example, meron kang research. Di ba? Anong ginagawa mo sa research mo? So, hanap ka ng mga PDF online. Hanap mga PDF, mga uh, kung ano-anong file. And then, anong gagawin mo? You're going to save that file. Bakit? Para pag kinuha ng leader nyo sa thesis, hindi siya mga ngarag. Kasi, ang gagawin niya, kukunin niya na lang yun, konting paraphrase, o diba? Tapos. Okay? So, yun. So, this is how can we communicate information. Next. Information literacy, as Chad defines it, it is the ability to recognize when information is needed and to locate, evaluate, and effectively communicate information and various formats. So, if you are an information literate person, um, you know when information is needed. Okay? Kailan natin kailangan ng information? Alam mo kung kailan natin siya kailangan. Alam din natin kung saan natin ilolocate ang, eval ang information and evaluate. And as well as, alam din natin kung paano na siya i-communicate sa iba. Di ba? Minsan kasi kapag kumukuha tayo ng information, nalilimutan na nating i-share sa sa iba eh. Okay? Nagiging, minsan nagiging parang makasarili tayo at, at point, at some point. Pero, if you are an information literate person, you know when that information is needed. For example, uh, ito na lang, gamitin na natin yung mga oras na umuulan kasi yan naman yung, yan naman yung madalas na, na nagagiging uh, problema or not, not really problem, but Yan yung madalas na nagiging concern ng mga estudyante kung papasok sila or hindi. Kapag nakita nilang madilim agad ang langit, na Diyos ko, <coughs> eto na, di ba? So, magtatanong na sila sa mga classmate nila, uy, uy, sa GC, uy, may pasok ba? Uy, wala ba? Yun, di ba? Kapag nakita mo, kapag nakita mo yung situation, uh, you know that you need the information right away. Diba? Kasi nakita mo, uy, madilim yung langit. Diba? Ma isipin mo, uulan. That is the time when you need the information. Okay? So, I need this information. I need this kung, pa kung uulan ba o hindi. Next, the next step is to locate your information. Saan ka maghahanap? Doon ba sa mga GC ninyo, which is unreliable? No. Pupunta ka sa mga legitimate web websites. Okay? Sa man news, sa mga ABS-CB and Twitter, nakita mo yung depth yung city government of Puntilupa. Nag-declare na walang pasok yun. That, that is the time you can evaluate that the information being posted on Muntilupa City Government uh, webpage is true. Bakit? Gobyerno na yun eh. Gobyerno na nagsabi nun na walang pasok. ba? So, next is effectively communicate information. So, paano mo isi-share? Pwede, pwede mo sabihin sa GC ninyo, uy, sabi sa Twitter, ganito, ganyan. Pero mas maganda, kapag isi-share mo yung, yung pag share mo yung information na nalaman mo, kasama sana, is-screenshot mo na, kasama yung webpage na nagsabi, or yung webpage kung saan mo nakita yung information. Okay? Lahat naman tayo ginagawa rin yan. Ginagawa ko rin ngayon minsan Diba? So, yun. So, that is information literacy. Next is uh, the next we have here is the general framework of information literacy for higher education. So, we have here the six vital concepts of information literacy. So, we have, we have here first 
authority is constructed in context what so this means that the information literate individual is able able to evaluate the legitimacy and credibility behind the piece of information so ibig sabihin nito guys kapag ikaw ay isang information literate person alam mo kung paano mo o paano or alam mo na ang in, certain information na yan ay totoo or hindi okay so is that uh, information true or not yan lang yung magiging tanong mo sa sarili mo with this kind of uh, concept okay next we have information creation as a process so this is very interesting no meaning that the information literate individual is able to evaluate not only the content of the information but also the process involved in creating this content this content no so meaning um, if you are a if you are an information literate person you know how information is being processed so alam mo kung paano nila kung paano nila ginagawa yung mga ganyang klaseng information no so uh, you know only not only the content but also the process involved kung paano nila ginagawa yung pag-produce ng ganyan klaseng process okay next we have information has values meaning that the information literate person realizes that even though information can be accessed for free it has many forms of value okay so ang information guys meron niyang halaga okay ang information may halaga yan so alam niyo ba na information can also be sold and also be or also can be bought pwede tayong bumili ng information guys ganyan ka ganyan ka ano ang information okay for example may gusto kang may gusto kang malaman Ah, minsan sa binibili natin yung information ginagawa yan ng ibang ano, ibang mga tao, di ba? Bibiliin ko kung ano yung nalalaman mo sa ganito, di ba? So, meaning information has the different values. Guys, sabi dito, although it can be accessed for free, meron siyang different value. Okay? Paano natin malalaman yung value ng isang information? Okay? So, meron tayong mga tinatawag na mga confidential information. Okay? So, what do we mean by confidential information? Meaning, ito yung mga information na, na da, dapat manatili lamang na hindi maipapakalat. Or meaning, this is not for public, uh, this is not for the public to see or to view. This information, uh, this uh, conf the confidentiality is very high meaning kailangan iba-iba lang or konti lang ang nakakaalam yan yung yan ang ibig sabihin na uh, confidential information so meron namang information na libre lang di ba for example the moon is or the earth is round for example that is an example of free information okay Next, we have searching as <clears throat> strategic exploration. So, this refers to the ability of the information literate to devise various multi-steps process in acquiring information. So, meaning, pag sinabi natin uh, uh, strategic exploration, meaning, for example, sino ba dito yung mga nakaranas ng mag-experiment? Diba? So, if, if we are... Uh, uh, if you are uh, experimenting, di ba, uh, we have this question na gusto nating mas masagot. And through the multi-step process in acquiring information, at the end of the research, makikita natin na yung result, that is the information that we need. Okay? For example, yung sugar. Di ba? Pag sinunog natin yung sugar, what could happen on that sugar pag sinunog natin? Di ba? So, with the different steps, in acquiring information, at the end, nakita natin na when we burn the sugar, di ba, hindi na natin siya, mag magkakaroon siya na tinatawag na chemical change. Hindi na siya maibabalik on 
the be- on on being the sugar that uh, it previously has, di ba? So yun, um, searching as a strategic exploration, yan yung ibig sabihin niya. Okay? Next. Scholarship as conversation. So this concept emphasizes the social component of information literacy. This means that information literate aims to actively and responsibly contribute to the worldwide exchange of ideas by sharing and learning. So this kind of information is uh, applicable, I think, to the academe. Okay? For example, yung mga scientists, may na-found sila na bago, for example, uh, may, uh, not, not only on the academe pala, no? so uh, on, on all different aspects. Example na natin yung medicine, for example. So, di ba nagsimula yan yung COVID-19, nagsimula sa Wuhan, China. Pero dahil pinipigil yung China na magsalita yung mga doctors, ano nangyari? Di ba? So, nagkaroon agad ng pag- maramihang pagkalat. Pero hindi nila pinag- pinag-uusapan nila yan yung mga doctors on a private chat room. Di ba? So, with this, kung sana kung na- naipaalam ng mga doctors yung bagong type ng uh, respiratory disease na yan, which is COVID-19, sana mas mabilis na nakagawa ng paraan ang lahat ng tao. No? Especially on the experts on the field of medicine. Yan na magiging ano nila. Yan na magiging parang uh, magiging pro- problem. Not really problem, but uh, yan yung sana yung nagawa nila para hindi kumalat itong COVID-19 na ito. Okay? So, not only on that, for example, is uh, you discovered something. For example, nakadiscover ka ng bagong species ng butike. Di ba? Ipapangalan mo sa pangalan mo. Halimbawa, uh, ganito. Ang pangalan mo sa butike mo, butikitus. Ganyan. Okay? So, uh, papangalan mo siya o ilalagay mo yan sa isang book, ipapublish mo yan. So, sa mo siya na-discover. So, with that, malalaman ng iba na mag, meron kang na-discover na bagong species ng butike. Okay? So, yeah, that this is the intelligent exchanges of information. Okay? So, next is research as an inquiry. So, this means that information literate respects and applies the research process. Their curiosity to learn guides them in seeking information and in expanding their knowledge by continually asking new and more difficult questions. Okay? So, as we know, research starts by inquiry. What do we mean by inquiry? Ang research kasi nagsisimula yun sa isang tanong. Okay? So, meaning, so, if you, if, if we want to gain more information, uh, it, uh, all information gathering starts by one initial question in mind. Okay. So, dito, ang ginagawa natin on the research, di ba? Na, na alaman nyo naman yan on your grade 11 days, di ba? Nag, anong ginagawa ninyo? Naghanap kayo ng tanong, ay, naghanap kayo ng, ng tanong sa umpisa, tapos maghanap kayo ng different uh, different uh, information on internet, on books, yan. Yan yung mga ginagawa ninyo. And then, you you synthesize every information until at the end of your research, nasagot na yung tanong ninyo. Diba? Ano yung tanong ninyo? Which, that is your research title. Okay? So, dito sa research as inquiry, diba? So, uh, meron tayong tinatawag na, diba, kumukha tayong information from different person, we're respecting those uh, information that came from uh from the people ahead. Diba? Yung mga pinagkuhanan natin ng information. Kaya kapag nag-research tayo, hindi natin kinakalimutan na mag-citate. Bakit? Kasi pag hindi tayo nag-citate, makakasuhan tayo. Diba? So, yun. So, that is the six vital concepts of information literacy. Next. Let us go now to the different elements of information literacy. First, we have number one, identifying and recognizing information needs. So, maybe this is a self-explanatory na, di ba? So, sabi ko nga kanina, ang research ay nag-uumpisa sa isang tanong. Okay? 
So when um, when you have this one question in your mind, that would be the time na kailangan mo na ng information. Okay, bakit? Kasi, bakit sir? Kasi nga po, kapag ikaw ay may tanong sa iyong isip, di ba? So anong ginagawa mo? Hinahayaan mo lang ba siyang tanong lang sa isip mo? No. Ang ginagawa mo, you look for the answers. Yun ang ginagawa natin. Next, we have determining the sources of information. So after determining the need, you now determine saan ka naman kukuha ng information. Pwede tayong kumuha sa internet, pwede tayong kumuha on the television, pwede tayong mag-research. Yan, yan yung mga pwede natin gawin to acquire information. Or that, that is uh, some sources of information. Next, citing or searching information. So now, you now go to the process itself. Okay? Kung alam mo na kung saan ka kukuha ng information, your number three, this is now the searching proper. Okay? Ito na mismo yung parang pinaka, ano mo, pinaka tawag dyan? Ito na yung pinaka pagsasearch. Okay? Next, we have analyzing and evaluating the quality of information. So, after you have sight, after yung makahanap ng information, it is now the time of analyzing and evaluating the quality of information. So, is this true? Is this is, is this credible? Papagkakatiwalaan ko ba tong sources na to? So, yun. That is an example. That is, that is how we analyze and evaluate the quality of information. Next, number five, organizing, storing, and archiving information. So, we can organize information by hierarchy or by uh, the importance of the set information. The more important the information is, kailangan it is more accessible. Okay? So, after that, after you organize, you store your information. Okay? So, why do we need to store? Because if we did not store the information that we have uh, searched, ano mangyayari? Pwede kailanganin natin ulit yung information na yan. At kapag kinailangan natin yung information na yan, hindi na natin makukuha kasi dinilit mo na eh. ba? So next, archiving information. Why do we archive information? Because sa research, pwede yan magamit ng mga future researchers. Yung archiving information. Okay? Next, using information in ethical, efficient, and effective way. So using information in ethical means let us not forget to citate or to acknowledge the author of some information that we made that we might be using in the future okay but that is mean according to ganyan we may citate it we may put it in the reference yan yung ibig sabihin nun. efficient and effective way next number 7 is creating and communicating new knowledge okay so uh, if you are an inf information literate person you can create and communicate new knowledge Okay? Kasi uh, you have this knowledge na on the information, so you can create your own. Okay? Next, what are the different different use of, different ethical use of information? Next, we have the common knowledge first. Common knowledge are the knowledge that is commonly known. Okay? What is the example of commonly known knowledge? For example, the earth is round. Okay? So, during the olden times, we know already that the earth is round. Diba? So, that is what we call the common knowledge. Next, we have the interpretation. So, the, in this interpretation, you must document facts that are not generally known or ideas that interpret facts. So, meaning, when we say interpretation, we must document facts that might state or support our interpretation or claims. So if we do that, if we do that interpretation, we must document the facts. Let us uh, let us make interpretation based on the existing facts that are that, that is generally known. Okay. Next, we have the quotation. Okay. So when we use quotation, when we use someone's words directly, it is also when you use a direct 
quote. So placing the passage between quotation marks and document uh, and document the source according to the standard documenting style. So with this, we can use the different document or uh, different referencing style like APA, MLA. Yan yung mga example niya. So when we quote a person, for example, sinabi niyo yung nakaklase niyo na ako ay maganda. You must you must put up put, you must put that up in a uh, quotation mark. Why? To state or to make it clear that it is not your own wordings, but it is someone's wordings. All right. So next, we have the paraphrasing. It is using someone someone's ideas, but rephrasing them in your own words. Although you will not use your own words to paraphrase you must still acknowledge and cite the source of information. So paraphrasing, it is using the other person's ideas, but but in a not a direct manner. Okay? You, you, you will change some words, you will change the arrangement of the sentence, but the thought must be the same with the original author. Okay? Next. Okay, let us now go to the strategies in avoiding plagiarism. Okay, there are several ways and strategies on how to avoid plagiarism. So, what do you mean by plagiarism? Plagiarism is claiming others' work as if it is your own. Okay, next. Number one, we have to submit your own work for publication. Meaning, if you, if you have your original work, kailangan nyo silang is submit for publication. Why? Because it makes your work uniquely yours. O kaya, okay, dalhin mo siya sa ano bang, sa, ano bang ano ng gobyerno yun para to intellectual property. Yan. Para maging sa'yo talaga yung work na yun. You need even to cite even your own work. Okay, next. Number two, put quotation marks around everything that comes directly from the text. Okay? So, if uh, you are citing a text, you need to have, especially a direct speech, you need to put it in a quotation mark. You also have, or you also need to, to cite the source. Okay? Next, number three, paraphrase. Yan yung, yan yung nalilimutan natin gawin, especially in research paper. Be sure that you are not simply rearranging or replacing a few words, but you really have to paraphrase it. Okay? So, kung natatandaan ninyo yung mga lessons ninyo sa reading and writing nung grade 11 kayo, paraphrasing is one of them. So, make sure that you utilize your knowledge about paraphrasing. Okay? Kasi pag hindi kayo nagparaphrase, kapag nahuli ko kayo na ginamit ninyo yung mga sinabi ko rito, I can sue you for plagiarism. Okay, next. Number four, keep a source journal, a notepad, or note cards. Annotated bibliographies can be especially beneficial. Okay, so you 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 have to have this journal. Why? Because you need a compilation of the different sources that you have. A notepad, a note cards. Alright? Next, use the style manual in properly citing sources. Okay? So, always remember these strategies in avoiding plagiarism. Last one is, get help from the writing center or the library. Ito yung, yung itong last, ito yung pinaka, uh, pinaka magandang uh, way para makaavoid tayo ng plagiarism. Okay? Let's move on. And now, we have the technology literacy. Let us define first what is technology literacy. It is, an, it is the ability of an individual either working independently or with others to responsibly, appropriately, and effectively use technological tools to access, manage, integrate, evaluate, create, and communicate information. So in technology literacy, aside from the different literacy that we had earlier, this technology literacy, it is your ability to use different technology. Okay? 
So, lahat tayo, guys, meron na tayong fundamentals in this, in this kind of uh, literacy, which is the technology literacy. Okay? So, technology literacy can also be this, defined as the essential skills and competence that allow individuals to engage with media and other information providers effectively as well as develop critical thinking and lifelong learning skills to socialize and become active citizens. Okay? Next, it is also subdivided into hardware literacy and source uh, and software literacy. So it this came from UNESCO 2007. So what are the different characteristics of a technologically literate person? Number one, recognizes the pervasiveness of technology in everyday life. So meaning, uh, a, a uh, technologically literate person knows uh, the different technologies that we can use or that we can utilize every day. Next, we have appreciates that the development and the use of technology involve trade-offs and a balanced costs of benefit. So dito, uh, may alam ng isang technologically literate person that the use of technology involve trade-off and balance cost and benefits. Meaning, alam niya kung saan niya gagamitin yung mga technology na yun. Itong technology na to, para saan to? Itong technology na isa, para saan din to? Okay? Next. Understands that technology reflects the values and culture of society. So, nowadays, technology became a necessity. No? Gaya da, di gaya noon na ang technology, ang TV, Hindi naman ganun kailangan niya. Dati nga, nakikinood lang kami ng TV sa kapitbahay eh. Hindi naman yan ganun ka kailangan. Nanonood lang kami pag cartoons na. Pero hindi naman namin kailangan manood palagi ng balita kasi mga bata pa naman kami nung mga panahon na yun, di ba? So yun. So, uh, you understand that technology reflects the values of culture of society. So, nowadays, part of our culture is technology. So, kailangan natin ang technology ngayon. Bakit? Doon na tayo nakakapaglabas ng ating mga saloobin. Doon na rin tayo nagpapakita ng mga talento natin. Gaya ng mga YouTubers, gaya ng mga TikTokers, mga ganyan, TikTokers, gaya ng ibang mga, gaya ng ibang mga talents na didiscover not only on contests, but on a different technology. Okay? Next. Know some of the ways of technology has shaped human tech history and how people have shaped technology. So, a technologically literate person knows uh, how the technology shaped us as a human and how people have shaped the technology. So, paano ba natin shape ang technology? Through our unending search for satisfaction. Bakit? Kasi for example, di ba, during the olden days, ang mga telephone natin ay analog. Di ba? So, ang lalaki pati ng mga cellphone natin, gaya ng, uh, ng analog phones, yung mga lalaki dati, lahat ng phones pa nakakord, hanggang nag-evolve siya into a telephone na pwede nang maging wireless, until such time na ang laki, 5110 ng mga cellphone natin, ang lalaki, ang lalaki di ba? So next, nagkaroon na tayo, nagkaroon na ng evolution ang mga cellphones ng simula noon. Meron ng mga keypad hanggang dumating yung mga araw na lumaki na yung mga screens ng cellphone. Tapos nawala yung mga keypad, napalitan na ng mga touchscreen. So that is how we see the technology nowadays. Nakita natin yung pag evolve ng technology and paano din natin binago ang teknolohiya. Kasi, hindi tayo nasasatisfy eh, di ba? For example, binigyan ka ng nanay mo ng cellphone na dikipad, di ba? So, ano sabihin mo sa nanay mo, ma, ba't dikipad? Di ba? Ano sabihin mong ganun? Ma, wala bang touchscreen? Ah, di ba? So, yun. Dahil nga hindi tayo nagiging contento, we have to search to satisfy our, uh, our, we need to, uh, tawag dyan, we need to, we need to, uh, Look for something that will uh, satisfy our de desire for change and our demands. Okay? Next, number five. 
knows all the technologies and tells risks risk not uh, or all, only some of which can be anticipated so not the technologies are may risk okay only some can be anticipated so hindi naman natin hindi naman lahat ng risk sa technology ay uh, alam natin no pero uh, alam natin na ang mga technology ay mayroon talagang risk for example pag humarap ka sa computer ng matagal, ano yung mga, anong mga stress na mga pwede mo makuha? Pwede kang makuha ng radiation, pwede kang makuha ng uh, kung ano-ano pa. Pag lagi kang bumipindot sa cellphone mo, anong mangyayari sa mga daliri mo. So yun, yun yung mga example ng mga risk na technology sa health din natin. Okay? Next, we have here, adapting media and information in the Philippines. So here, So here we have here the uh, the uh, media and information literacy in the Philippines. So in 1960s, uh, it is the start of MIL and education classes. 1970, new organization, uh, the PAME, which is the Philippine Association for Media Education, church-based organization promote the concept of media awareness. In 1987. And in 2000, uh, the new resource book, Media Edu Education, a teaching manual. Uh, in the by the end of 2000, uh, UNICEF Manila publication, your guide to KD TV viewing. And on the 2011, Ramon Tuason co-authored the book, UNESCO MIL curriculum. So next. MIL is about empowerment, a set of competencies, both content and a process, includes understanding media and information about why they do and why they do, a lifelong learning skill. It is about analysis of media and information as a basis for creating meaningful media messages includes evaluating information as a basis for good decisions includes analysis of messages and how media and media creation is affected by technologies and algorithm okay so mil alam natin yan kanina media and information literacy mil is not it is not about educational technology but includes educational function of mass media it is not about technology literacy, but uh, this includes digital literacy. Okay, it is not only about uh, knowing how to use the technology, but also the entire digital world as a whole. Next, it is not about information technology, but it includes information literacy, a domain of library and information science, not a film or video production course. Although media creation is an important component, hindi lang to. Hindi kayo, hindi, nyo, hindi, hindi kayo nag aaral ng MIL for video production lang. Okay? So next is, it is not about media bashing. Okay? So what are the triple E's of MIL? So this is from UNESCO, Middle Year Book 2015, page 33. The triple E's of MIL is explore, engage, and empower. So let us take note of the questions <coughs> that we have in the triple E's of MIL. First, how are we going to or how do I identify access and retrieve information and media content skillfully? Saan tayo kukuha ng information? Next, engage. How do I analyze and evaluate media and information critically? So in this engage, not only that we analyze Paano din tayo mag-evaluate ng media? Okay, next, next is to empower. This is to empower how do I create, share, and use information in media content ethically, safely, and responsibly for decision-making and taking action. Okay, so in media, uh, this empower means the utilization and the application of media. Okay, next and also to explore again. So this is a 
this is simply a repeated process. What is MIL? Okay, MIL stands for Media and Information Literacy and it refers to the essential competencies and skills that allow citizens to engage with media and other information providers effectively and develop critical thinking and lifelong learning skills to socialize and become active citizens. So this is a this is a uh, uh, definition of media and information literacy that came from UNESCO MIL curriculum. Okay? So with that, guys, uh, you can check also these references if you want to know more. And um, that is our first lesson, our first, uh, uh, few, first, first, first few topics for media and information literacy. Okay? So, um, I hope that you have learned something from the lesson. And at the same time, uh, you may enjoy taking this subject for your grade 12, uh, uh, for your incoming grade 12. Okay, so uh, see you next week and God bless. So this is Sir Ruben again. Goodbye, guys, and thank you.